下。<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are finally on the air. The gremlins are gone. Welcome, welcome. This is the very first full rostered geek swag podcast on Ladies of the Round Table Network. What's happening, geeks for quality? What's happening, people? What's happening, world? I am your host, BJ Bunny 3000, along with my boy, Dirty Dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty El Mato, and of course the one and the only, the Grim Freaker. Hi everybody. That's Yay! right. We are here. Yay! We are that's finally that's together. That's I gave you all just a little, a little taste of what Geek Swag is all about last week, and uh, you know we, I, I went over a whole lot of stuff, and I of course I forgot to uh, actually stay in touch with everybody that's actually watching on the channel um so i apologize for that you know a little a little bit of a new mistake you know we try we got to talk to the audience because we live we're not recorded that's why it's called geek swag live you know i'm sure somebody recognized that unfortunately i didn't at the time but it's okay we got it <laughs> under control this time <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen we've got a great show We've got a lot of great stuff going on. We got a lot of great stuff coming up. Um, even before I get going, get started, um, one little bit of news here. I wanted to send a really, 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 really big thank you um, to uh, Malcolm Goodwin from the show um, I Zombie that's going to be on the CW network in 2015. I had an interview with him uh, this past uh, Friday. Great interview, great guy, very, very, very cool. I Zombie is going to be a very, very strange, but very, very interesting show. So you know, you guys keep your ears and eyes open for that show. I think it's going to be something that you'll be interested in. Um, I'm hoping to have the interview all written up and everything, you know, in the coming week or so. So keep your eyes on heedmag.com backslash geekswag, which is where. You know, all of the Geek Swag articles and all the posts from all of our previous beautiful shows are. So um, definitely keep your eyes and ears open there. And uh, you'll see some of the new stuff coming up, uh, some of the other things going on. Um, and I'm, I'm not even certain if I mentioned this uh, last week. But um, since I got you here, Makita, let people know about your channel your site that you manage because i don't think the people over at uh ladies at the round table all of the fans there know about zombie gamer online so let them know okay um zombie gamer online well uh i started it basically to um i guess kind of like broadcast my personality as far as honesty is concerned in the video game industry so um, our tagline is your source for uninfluenced video game and comic book news reviews, um, news reviews and previews. Well, it was, but it's just news and reviews now. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, basically we're just looking for, we just do honest reviews. There's no ass kissing. There's no <sighs> worrying about if, um, you know, who's, who has the biggest advertisement, you know, that they're going to give a higher score for this and that. It's just like straightforward gaming, straightforward news about the industry. Um, as far as my channel, I've just started my um, my own channel, which I've been doing mostly horror games. And the latest one I did was, uh, I think it was Never Ending Nightmares. And the next 
the next game I plan to have up next is Alien Isolation. So mm, that's yeah. ongoing. I've been doing a lot of Let's Plays lately. Yeah, I got to get... Eventually, I got to get into that, too. It's sitting on my shelf back there. <laughs> and it's it's one of those that I'm definitely going to get into. I've got so much stuff on my plate trying to get around to. A lot of new stuff. A whole, whole, whole lot of new stuff. Speaking of which, uh, today's Tuesday. We got like new release games or something like that today, don't we? Yes, we do. Please tell me you guys know about some of them. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, there's Sunset Overdrive. <laughs> oh one. yeah, I forgot about that's that. Right, that's right. Yeah, that's you wanted today. that one, didn't you? Uh yeah. I well, I who are you talking? Me and Makita. Uh, Jason, you. Yeah. Oh yeah, I definitely want that. But right now, I'm on a um. You want I'm a broken admission? Yeah, I, I think. <laughs> I can either buy it when I get money or dent my credit card some more. So I'm gonna wait till I have cash. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I'm thanks busy to that with, big uh, shiny new games. PS4 that you splurged games on. Pretty much. Uh, well, I only got like one game. I don't really count that's But um, money. I, I mean, it got great reviews. I mean, a lot of people said it was good. I, I heard anything between eight and nines from the game um and it just looks like a hell of a fun game to play open world borderlands like game you know it just looks fantastic yeah um, i've been hearing good so, things which was odd honestly i'll tell you the truth when i saw like the trailer for it i wasn't really too <laughs> i wasn't really too thrilled i was like oh yeah that looks interesting yeah that's okay next game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wasn't really that interested in it when I saw it, but I mean, you know how it is. You you hear about people talk about it when it comes out. That's usually when you when you finally make that last minute decision to right. to rent it or watch it or just all out splurge on it. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wasn't really interested that yeah, much. Yeah, I think either. I'm all out splurge. I, I, you know what? From I saw it um, when they did, uh, I, I just, I, it looked good. Mm -hmm. Good to me. I, I was, I was hyped about it. It looked like a just a fun, you know, one of those mindless games you could just play. You don't really have to think too much, and you know, put a lot of, a lot of brain work into it. A lot it. of brain power. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looked, it looked good. You know, something that you could pick up like, you know, eleven o'clock at night when you bored and just. <laughs> play yep like a diablo just just click 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 click, click and that's what it looked like so mm -hmm. that's out today they also have lords of the fallen which is supposed to be like this uh game that they're comparing to dark souls 2 uh, yeah actually i saw that at uh i saw that at comic con it yeah it, it, looks, it looks like beautiful. a beautiful yeah it looks like a beautiful dark souls 2 it really? definitely does. It, it's you know it's yeah. got all it's got all those elements of being mad difficult. You know the diehard action RPG kind of setup, the learning your enemies and all their you know how they attack and how you have to dodge and you know if you don't dodge quite right, it's like one hit kill kind of kind of situation depending on who you're fighting. Right. You know so yeah it's it's pretty deep. It's pretty. I don't know, I'm not really a big fan of. I feel like Dark Souls is more like grinding. I'm not really into grinding no, that much. No grind. You have you. I can you see haven't some played. Strategy. You have you. Have you said it's it's close to Dark Souls. It's not quite a Dark Souls, but yeah, Dark Souls yeah. is like a whole nother animal. Honestly, it's oh, not. Okay. It's not really. Like, to me, it's not really grinding. It's like. <sighs> yeah, I'm it's hard, it's hard to categorize it, you know? <laughs> it Dude, just seems like everybody's just like... Oh, it, 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 it's a grind, that, I'll put it this way. It's a grind to play, but it's not grind, yeah. RPG grinding like, you know, Diablo Beating or something like that. Level up and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it, it's oh, not... that's fun. I'm or like Final... Like, well, let me change that. Not like Final Fantasy grind or, you know, your typical JRPG grind. Right. You know, it, it's definitely not like your typical R, R, JRPG grind because you don't ha, most of the time you don't just fight enemies. Just well, of course you do. Most RPGs are like that, but you know you aren't just like, oh, I can't beat this boss, so I've got to go beat like ten million slimes so that I can get 
you know, the next <laughs> spell <laughs> that's going to affect the boss. Right. You know, it, it's it's more like trying to see how far you can really get because the, the trick in Dark Souls is sometimes you learn when you need to fight and sometimes you learn when you need to run. And then, most you know, the you yeah, most of the time you're running, but, you know, once you get a certain way or you learn of a way to really be able to defeat certain enemies or bosses, you know, then you'll be able to take all those souls, use those souls to either buy equipment or upgrade your guy. And, you know, you're balancing between doing those two things all the time. And, you know, if you can't get past it, then you backtrack you know, you look for other stuff, look for secrets, all this other kind of stuff. It's it's a whole nother animal, you know, when it comes to uh, RPGs. You know, it was one of those that I got into it for a while. And, you know, you hit that one that one first roadblock and it's just like, boom. Uh, frustration, rage quit, next game. <laughs> uh, That's basically that how it ends up for quit. me. I, I made it through. I made it through. About 15 minutes of the first one, and I died about 10 times. I'm like, you know what? I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's as yeah. much as Dark Souls got for me. I, I, I hate games like that because they're not enjoyable. I'm not saying, you know, you know, it, 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 it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just really can't think of it. It does suck. It, I, yeah, I it takes, there people, it, it takes people a special there, like, person like that stuff, but, to like it. Yeah, you know there are there are people out there that enjoy the challenge and they will play the crap out of it until they, you know, they're completionists. So once they get started, you know, there's like no stopping. It doesn't matter, you know, what it was that they had to, you know, that um they were faced with when it comes to that particular game. They just do whatever it takes, whether it's ask somebody. Um, you know, continue to play it for another eight hours <laughs> until they find their own right. way. You know, it, Dark Souls is just one of those because once you do actually figure out how to beat certain things or people or bosses, you know, the feeling is like ten times better than you know playing half of the games that I've played before. Because it, you know, it, it that actually happened with me. Once I actually figured out how to beat one of the first bosses, I was like, yo, this is hype. Until I got to the next boss and couldn't get past him, then I was right, like, and that's 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 my problem with the game. You know, like if if every every everything you go through is an obstacle, and it should be, I don't that's not a fun game for me. Like I can understand bosses being you know problematic, and you know you may have certain guys getting up to the boss that may be problematic. But yo, even a skeleton be throwing you off. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> and you, I'm like, no, nah, that shit is right. <laughs> well, it's because you got to get your weight up, Dicky. That's all it is. You just suck. Yeah, no, That's all that is. <laughs> Believe the hype. <laughs> <laughs> Believe the hype. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. What uh, what other kind of news do we have that you guys have? Uh, like, Makita, what about you? What do you got for us um, to get into before we jump into our segments that we have for the day what do you mean like gaming wise anything it could be a movie tv show because i was gonna you know i was gonna uh, talk a little bit lunch. about uh about the avengers age of ultron trailer anyone seen that no i, I, I no. haven't seen it i don't know I'm, i think i'm just like super jaded and i don't care about these movies anymore <laughs> i don't know <laughs> It's ba it's basically just got started. Come on now. I mean, DC I is getting ready to jump got, off. I know it just got started, but I'm just yeah. like, okay. I don't know. I'm just, I'm like I said, I'm, I, I think I'm just, I'm jaded about a lot of things, especially like the comic book industry and when it comes to movies. So I'm uh -huh. just like, I'm like, whatever, bro. <laughs> I, I was where you were, but you know what? I stopped getting upset because I... I, I really these are these are characters I've been dying to see like from since I was a kid on the big screen, and what they were doing they were killing a lot of these movies by changing the plot. But I I kind of so you know what I'm just gonna go off of not stop going off of what I know and just enjoy the film for what it is because if you, if you start getting to that point I mean like Iron Man three I felt like choking the people out that made Iron Man three. And everybody's like, oh, my God, it was such a good movie. It's the best one in the Ew, series. Oh. no way. <laughs> it was, exactly. It was I mean, enjoyable, I don't know if you ever but it find, wasn't the best one now. 
you know, I don't know if you ever follow Iron Man, but the Mandarin, the way they made him, holy crap. They, was, yeah, that was a butch, real that rip off. Yeah, oh, I was like, what y'all do? The Mandarin is a what? An actor from the Philippines? Yo! <laughs> well, I was, was kind of bent, you know? And I was kind of hype. I'm like, what? They got the Mandarin? They're going to have this, the seven rings and whatever the hell he had and none of that. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you saw that article that I sent you, Jay. That may have, may have been the way they portrayed it in that movie, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the end all be all of that whole situation with that even, guy. Even if but it they is, shouldn't have done it in the first place. First that place, was really corny. Yeah, pretty much. That was whack. You don't do a character like the Mandarin like that, son. Hey, that you that think? might that might be them building it up. You know, building just, what up? He's that's the thing. It had it. Building. All like, I'm saying. Wait, well, listen, today? listen, people, listen. All I'm saying is that the end of the storyline isn't done yet. You don't know what they're going to do with all the characters yet. Yes, they did say that. They used that tagline for that one movie. But there may be a chance, a possibility, that they are building that particular character for another movie to be the actual Mandarin. Because they hadn't, you know, like you said, Jason, they hadn't introduced any of the Rings of Power yet at all. None of them. I didn't even think they were going to. And, and they and, are. And, and, you saw and that. Based, They're introducing and, and, them now. And based off of uh, what you know, Downey Jr. saying he, he ain't playing Iron Man no more, mm. that's a wrap. That ain't having it. You never know. You DJ, never you're know. like... I am, Obviously, yes, a serial, I am a serial optimist. Yes, I am. There's always, I am a blue lantern to the core. <laughs> I always have hope for it. I always do. Mainly because, like Jason said, this is the very first opportunity for us to see good renditions of our favorite superheroes. Yes. F what you heard. I understand people being upset about them butchering or changing the storylines, but guess what? They have really good actors and actresses this time. They don't have Joe Blow that's like a B-list actor playing the Punisher or some unknown dude playing, you know, Spider-Man or whoever. (laughs) You know, they actually have people that will draw casual fans or people that have never seen or read a Marvel you know, comic book in their life. Right, and I think those the are the movie. people that are actually enjoying them more because, I mean, like, even even with X-Men Days of Future Past, you know the storyline, I know the storyline. Yeah, they, they, even, they, they, they haven't... They yeah, butchered they it, but you it know what? Quite right, but when they I, when left I, it open I so back, they could redo it. Right, but when I step back, you know what? They were able to pull it off, I think, and it was still a very enjoyable movie. Even though I would have liked to see Cable and more Bishop, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but... Mm-hmm. You know what? For another movie, but that was it. I actually still enjoy it, and I I know they got you know you know in their defense they got to work with the contracts and the, the things that they have. So yeah, because I mean you, know, you, you think gotta about consider it. that too. You think like, about it the way Marvel screwballed their whole game plan when they sold off all of their properties because they were near bankruptcy, like around two thousand. Because Fox is screwing them over big time. You know, they can't do anything that has anything to do with mutants in any of these movies. So you can see how you can see how their hands are tied right now, you know, trying to do Infinity Gauntlet and, you know, the Avengers and all this other kind of stuff. They can't even touch like Wolverine or the X-Men or any of that. They just can't, you know, or else they'll get sued, you know, like for millions 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 of dollars so it's like they have to you know they have to take those storylines that they're trying to do and they have to like they have you know they almost have to redo them completely you know it's it's a hard thing to do because you know like i said they 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 put themselves in a bad position because of you know in their past they had to do what they had to do to stay open but you know, we'll like I said before, we'll see what they come up with. I'm excited. There's stuff that I saw and things that they are touching on that still excite me, even if I know that they aren't going to be true to the comic book. Right? Because I, I mean, like, you know, the comic the, book is like, a comic like, book. That's just like a regular book. You're all like, the, what do you the think book's always going to be better. It's never going to be the that same. Age of Ultron uh, trailer. Now I'm, I'm I'm thinking from there from like some of the dialogue that happened. I'm thinking they're gonna make Ultron Jarvis, 
or Jarvis Ultron. That's my. Uh, hmm. That's kind of where I'm going with it. That's because there's a the little part in there where Tony Stark is talking about I brought you all to this, you know, and it, it seemed like you know he's gonna, you know, Jarvis is gonna wig out or <laughs> whatever <laughs> and become Ultra. You know, so, a part you know, of me, and, and that, like a I part said, of me doesn't want to. A part of me doesn't want to quite go that far because uh, I think I think I and, and the only reason why I say it is because I think I some of the like plot twists and stuff that I've heard people talk about from some of the writers and stuff I think it might go in a different direction I don't think it's gonna be Jarvis that is Ultron but you know there's a chance for that there's a chance I don't know well, I don't see Ant Man in there anywhere. Uh, not yet. It's <laughs> coming. Unless, unless they hide him <laughs> someplace in the back. Well, I mean, you know, that's 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 what I mean. They've they've announced the the timeline for a lot of the, a lot of the movies that they're doing. It you know, it kind of makes you wonder what all they're going to touch upon in this upcoming movie because you know, like you said, Ant Man hasn't. They haven't done the Ant Man. But they right. are doing it. So it's like, okay, you are doing it, but you haven't done it before this one. So is he going to show up? Are they just well, I mean, there's no shame it? in the game of putting him in there, you know, not doing an Ant-Man movie and dropping him in, you know, Age of Ultron. Right, but I don't even think they've selected the guy who's going to be. Uh, who's gonna I thought they him. did. Really? They have? Who? Yeah, I thought it was Paul, what's the name, Paul Rudd? Was oh, really? I didn't hear that. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I may be mistaken, but I thought that's what I saw maybe like weeks back. That, that maybe. He was be, yeah. Maybe but, you made that up. Uh, yeah, that's I, what I, I hope think. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Sega Nation makes up another rumor for the interwebs. <laughs> yes. They're falling into my trap. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, who was it? Who was it? Who else was it? They uh, they announced uh, Doctor Strange. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Everybody's trying to get that part. Yeah, what's her name? What's his name? Uh, Cumberbatch is supposed yeah. to be Doctor Benedict Strange. Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, yeah, Benedict Cumberbatch is supposed to be Doctor Strange. Cumberbatch, Cumberbatch. So that'll he, be he's interesting. A, he, he's a good actor, man. Yeah, he is. He's been in that some dude, good stuff. Excellent actor. Mm. That dude is just off the hook. I mean, he, he even made Star Trek Into Darkness. Here. He did. <laughs> <laughs> he did. I was I was already a, I was already like to poo poo that movie, they're, but they're, he, they're he pulled it out. That movie, <laughs> yeah, he he pulled that role out. He was good. He did. He was good in that. Without him being there as Khan, yo, that movie would have. You know, I actually liked the first one. I was like, I was psyched to see. I was like, oh my god, these guys are like, it's not horrible, but they're not pulling their weight. But he right. did such a fantastic job. You know, he helped him out big time. Mm-hmm. So let's see. So what? So for those for those out there who don't know who Benedict Cumberbatch is, what other movies has he been? Because I don't even remember what was. Well, so was what role police. was he in in Star Trek? So like to oh, start he's, that. He's Khan in, he's in Star Trek. He okay, plays, that's right. Um, he's Khan in Star Trek. The Smarg, last Star Trek. Smarg, I forgot how to pronounce the name. Smog the Hobbit. Yeah. Oh, yep. Smog in the Hobbit. Oh uh, yeah, he was the voice of Smog. He um, Sherlock Holmes. Yes, Sherlock Holmes, Sherlock Holmes with his counterpart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's in the Hobbit also. <laughs> the Hobbit. Yes. Um, and he's done a whole bunch of BBC stuff that I don't know about. <laughs> yeah. The BBC. Yeah. 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 Uh, That's the theme song for BBC. No, that That's was the theme song. You made that up. No, I didn't make that up. That was from Austin Powers. That was one of the songs that he <laughs> that he did in Austin Powers. BBC One, BBC Two, BBC Three, BBC Four. What was the name of that group? Uh, Ming T or something like that. His little band in uh, Austin Powers, where he was singing all the time. <laughs> Dude, I you actually remember that? <laughs> Heck yeah, I watch that. I watch that all the time. I love that. Movie. All those movies, actually. Yeah, they're, they're pretty funny. It is funny. Back, you know, back in the day, that was the big thing. But also, uh, you know, we we kind of touched on a lot of the movie stuff. Um, were there any other movies that you guys? wanted to discuss that you heard about that you're interested in seeing or actually i got seen? i got a big whoop for interstellar i heard that was uh really yeah i heard it was uh pretty good 
What's his name did that? Uh, was that Christopher Nolan? Ding, 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 ding. What is he here, Johnny? Yes, you are correct, Brian Cesar. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> <That's> hilarious. So, <laughs> yes, the director of the Dark Knight trilogy yes. and what, trilogy. what else? Yes, the trilogy trilogy. And uh, what's the other one that he did? Uh, what was the other big movie he did? Yes, he did. What, X-Men? No, he did. No. Yeah, he did X-Men. That's not what I'm talking about. He's famous for more than just the Dark Knight trilogy. Of course, we're all going... Say what? (laughs) The Darkness trilogy? The Darkness Darkness is... is. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, what is it? Um, Inception, Memento... Yes, Inception. Yes, I love Inception. Great Inception movie. was awesome. I think, I think that was one of the few movies that I've ever seen more than twice in the movie theater. I think I saw it maybe like four times. Oh heck yeah, that's and, a movie that's just like you have to see it in the theater for the full. And day. it was it was just so crazy because there were some people that were like, I didn't I didn't understand what Inception was, and I was like, how do you not know? Oh, Inception how, was it deep. Is like, don't say oh, Inception yeah. was deep, so it can I'm it can confuse a lot of people trying to figure out what. You know what really, really happened and what really didn't happen. I think that's probably all they're talking about. But it's actually it's, the, the movie itself it's is heavy. pretty clear. But if you miss, like, say, if you went to the bathroom and came back, you were screwed. Yeah, you were so lost. Mm-hmm. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, you're screwed. So you have you, to pay attention. Movie, to that. Yes, you have to watch that whole movie. You can't take potty breaks or have somebody talking to you, mm-hmm. or you or you would lose what's going on very quickly. But if you fo- if you stay watch the movie through whole way through, you get the whole thing. <laughs> he also did Man of Steel. Yes. Insomnia. So you know he's uh he's pretty deep in it, and he's already said that he's no longer doing DC movies. Mm. No more DC Comics movies. Oh. According to, well, okay, let me let me let me rephrase that. This is you know how the interwebs are, people. You, you get all those rumors. You see something on the on the interweb, and you go, "Up, oh, it's got to be true." So let me just take a step back and say from the source, this is according to uprocks.com. They recently posted an article that said that uh, according to his brother and his screenwriting partner, Jonathan Nolan that he um, is taking a step back from directing any future Cape Crusaders. So that's not a uh, complete kibosh on all DC Comics movies in the future. That's just saying, okay, I'm taking a break. I did one. Enjoy it. Get out my face. (laughs) I got other stuff to do. So, let's set the record straight. He's not going to, quote unquote, not do any DC movies ever. He's just not doing the next one is pretty much what it sounds like that's right learn the interwebs people learn it and throw a lot of it'll it'll throw a whole lot of untruth in your ear if you don't (laughs) right but something else uh back to the whole video game thing i i kind of forgot to touch on this um a game that we haven't seen in quite some time came out today NBA Live finally dropped uh, a version. Yes, yes today. it did. It's amazing. I did, I did. and it sucked. Really? <laughs> yes. Did it really? Reviews. They said it was horrible. The reviews they they are horrible again. Yeah, they 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 got it like uh, what's his name in um life can't get right. They can't get it right. Oh lord, can't have get mercy. right. You know what's so uh, funny about that? They actually pulled people. That uh, were from 2K Sports over there to help them do this, which is what yeah, amazes me. Uh, so, uh, here, here's what uh, IGN said about it. They go, uh, small improvements aside, NBA Live still can't get the fundamentals right. Wah, oh, wah, wah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, oh man. Well, 2K just put a very superior product out there. I mean, even though their servers be all jacked up for like the multiplayer and stuff, uh-huh. but the but the local gameplay is just 
fantastic the the my gm and you know the my player it's just really good yeah so you know what do you get what you gonna do <laughs> yeah i don't get it i don't get it i don't know what ea is gonna do with it you know they're they they're oof. they gotta do something drastic and i mean that's the weird thing they did something drastic multiple times and none of it came anywhere close to being mediocre what they need to do is give up the rights to Madden and let uh, 2K start making it again. They, making, no, uh, they aren't doing that. Ain't no way in the world they're doing that. We talking <laughs> basketball, son. We not even we ain't got football, which from my from what I've been hearing, they've done a good job with. Actually, heard this last yes. Madden was actually really good. But yeah, yeah, another game that I spoke about uh, last week on the show, as you guys were not here. I was trying to hold down for the peoples. Um, that is a very interesting game I'll be doing a review on that's called Dungeon of the Endless. A little indie game that's out there by uh, Amplitude Studios. And this game, have either of you guys played um, the game Faster Than Light, FTL? No, you know, no. I have that downloaded too, <laughs> but I, I haven't played it. Uh, okay, okay. Have you played, and I, I haven't played this game, but I've, I saw comments in the reviews where people said um, it was like this other game. Have you ever played Binding of the Isaac, I think is what it's called? Binding of the Isaac? Isaac? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't even heard oh, of it. Oh, that was like a part two or something uh, like oh, that. Oh, Binding not, of uh, the Isaac. I think it's Binding of Isaac. It's like a horror say, game, right? No, it might be. I don't know if it is. It, it's got a weird... You know, it's got a weird cartoony kind of look to it, so I'm not 100% certain it's a horror game. Because, <laughs> you know, it's kind of cartoony. You probably have to Google it and look at it, you know, for you to uh, to see what it looks like. But it's uh, it's kind of it's kind of an action RPG shooter. Um, but the whole concept of it is there's a term that I don't want to say is new, but... Um, a genre that's called roguelike you know where um basically what the term means is you know it you have randomized dungeons you've got permanent death um almost turn-based type gameplay you know um there was a because apparently it was a game called rogue back in 1980 that was you know kind of like a an old MMORPG kind of thing um, back in the 80s. So anytime they use the term roguelike, it's because it's like rogue, of course. But um, this particular game, you know, so it's like every time you play the game, it randomizes the dungeon and it randomizes the loot and the monsters so that you never play the same game twice, right? That's essentially the whole concept. And in this game dungeon of the endless you'd think that it's like a medieval you know kind of hack and slash game right no it's kind of like a mashup between um uh it's kind of like a mashup between aliens and what other sci-fi movie can i think of um well, I guess you could say almost like Dead Space. You know how in Dead Space you're going through and you're, you know, going through and you're exploring through, um, you know, like a big space station or something like that. Um, it's, I guess you could kind of say it's like that. So in Dungeon of the Endless, um, you, you crash land um, in an escape pod and you're basically trying to get your power source up to the surface. And the way you do it is um, it's kind of act played out in kind of a, a real-time strategy kind of kind of feel. So everything is in real time. And like I said, you know, like the other thing said, it's permanent death. So you don't have any saves. It's extremely hard. Um, it randomizes all the rooms and dungeons every time that you play it. And, you know, it, it's one of those kind of games where you have um, you have to balance resources and use them very very strategically in order for you to get through each level so as you go through you'll spend resources on technology science or food to either upgrade your character 
upgrade like turrets or whatever that you put down to help protect you or upgrade the amount of like uh, resources that you pull from every time you go into different rooms so of course every time you go into a room there's a chance there's monsters that'll come at you and you'll get loot and all this other kind of stuff will happen but um it's so hard and i think i stayed up probably until about two in the morning last night playing it trying to beat it and it's it's just one of those games that you know once you get the hang of it and you learn how you really play it it's just so addictive love it love it love it love it, love it. and it just came out the full version actually just came out um today i think so it's another one of those really good games, really good indie games is out there that'll definitely keep you working at it. Just like FTL. FTL is just like that too. Extremely hard, but it's so much fun. And of course, the further you get, the more you unlock, the more you try to play, all that other kind of stuff. So. Right. But yeah, great game. Great game. Great game. So, I think it's time, people. Let us go ahead and get into our segments. How about that? Okay. Who would like to go yeah, first? Who would like to go first? Uh, Not me. I'm uh, always going first. <laughs> it's true. Fine. I go first. And <laughs> okay, and it, okay. You know. The IT Corner. Or Daddy Helmato. Let him know what's up. I like chicken. Ew. His fingers <laughs> no. Wrong podcast. <laughs> That's right. Get it together, Helmato. Get it together. Well, you know, I was searching around on the interwebs, mm-hmm. looking for some stuff uh, the last couple of days, and I saw some interesting things about Walmart, which what? I was kind of shocked. Walmart's trying to get into the selling of used games. They start next great. week. Yes, they do. November great. 3rd in over 1,700 stores. So I'm excited about that. I want to see what they have. And it, um, from what I can tell... It looks like, you know, they're going to be pretty competitive with the trade-ins. Now, wh- here's something I didn't know. I don't know if you guys knew this, but they were doing trade-ins from uh, March this year. Yeah, yep. I knew they were doing trade-ins, but I didn't know. You know, yep. I of course, as everyone knows, I hadn't seen anything about them selling that stuff back. So my guess is build your inventory, get the inventory, distribute the inventory. And you got it. So that's that's basically what they've been doing. So, you know, they, they basically, you know, they were giving out people like, you know, credit vouchers for their store and like, you know, like, you know they had sick love and stuff like that. Um, you know, right now it doesn't look like they're going to do anything like, um, you know, like hardware stuff. Not, not that they mentioned, um, so that they're still or that, but, um, come November 3rd and 4th, they're going to do up to 50% for those two days. Um, you know, and they're going to release, uh, call of duty advanced warfare a little early. Um, I think a it's little. a day. A, yeah, it's 24 like a, hours. Or, 24 yeah, hours right. earlier than um, yep. yeah, everybody Yeah, the day else. zero, the day zero everybody. edition. Yep. No, so, well, is yeah, it the so day zero you, edition? Yeah. Yeah. You pre-ordered, so you, you get 50%. Day zero. Yep. Day zero. You know, you get, you, know, you get the hook up there, and they're doing up to 100% trade-in for uh, if you're going to buy and put your credit card in the state for, so... That you know, if you somebody's looking to do that and they got a whole bunch of games to get rid of, you know, you never know. You could knock off a good hundred, two hundred bucks off of that real quick. You know, get the hookup. So, yep. you know, I I'm gonna keep my eye out for that because you know how Walmart do. You know, those guys, you know, because GameStop is just horrendous. <laughs> you know, and um, I think right now because GameStop and Best Buy, they're kind of you know they kind of corner the market on on, on that you know trade ins. Mm-hmm. If you throw a Walmart in there, and even if they add like another five bucks, they're gonna take them over, you know, because those guys, those guys are bad, man. I mean, they do like they mark down these games like to ridiculous prices. It's just horrible, horrible, right. horrible, horrible. So, Walmart, I got my eye on you, son. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just it's really great. It's I think it's really great for them to have competition because. Um, GameStop is really a horror when it comes to trading in your games. I mean, everybody has that one story where they bought the game like two days ago and then GameStop is like, yeah, we'll give you like two bucks, you know? And it's just like, I just spent, what, $60 on this game? How is it that you can't 
give me the sixty dollars back, or you know, even if it's still in plastic, I've taken back games that are still in plastic, and they won't even give me full price. But they will turn around and sell it for full price, mm-hmm. though. Heck so, yeah. Yeah. so cool. GameStop really needs that competition where they see, okay, Walmart maybe may possibly, even though they're not doing, um, I think like the cash option, um, at least not right now. It, it at least they may have a. Um, I guess kind of a plan where they may offer more points so that you can have more value. Maybe they might start, you know, giving GameStop and Best Buy a run for their money. I could easily see them doing that because of the fact that people already shop at Walmart for various other things. They might say, oh, you know what? Let me just take my games at Walmart and trade them in since I'm going to get a better deal, more points here so I can get such and such game, which I may get for like a dollar less or something like that. So. I think and I, they make big they're, steps. They're, I agree with you, Makita. I think they're going to do that. And I, I, I do I, If they give you a couple dollars more for your game, people are going to go over there because, I mean, like, it's bad. I, I, don't, I don't know if you guys remember my little Destiny store when I got my PS4. Oh, heck yeah. They wanted me to get that 20. I'm like, man, y'all must be on crack. You, might <laughs> you know what? I don't care. I'll, I'll wrap it up. Hopefully, one of the kids get it. I'll play it. You know what? I'm not giving you $20. That so, yeah. I, I agree with that. I think I hope Walmart does something good there to, to definitely throw some competition on them because they, yeah, I think they've been cornering the market too long as far as used games go. And uh, you know, it's even, even sometimes, you know, I've walked in, I don't know if this ever happened to you, I've walked in there a few times, right? And say there's a markdown game, right? And it went from 60 to, to 40 bucks, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hey, I'd like to buy this game new. And the guy will be like, um, well, I have it new. It's not in, you know, we had to open up the wrapper to, uh, and put it on display because we don't have them with display cases, but the game is new. No. I'm like, no, the game isn't new. I said, the it's, game, the, it's not in a wrapper. I said, I should get it. No, well, it is new. Does it matter? I'm like, yeah, it does matter. I, you know what? I'll hop over to Wally World and get it when it's in the new case. Mm-hmm. You know, and, you know, they kind of get mad, but like, yo, that's the same thing you do to me when I bring my game in oh, here. Yeah, definitely. So you know, you know it's kind of it's kind of like that. Don't don't like that about GameStop. You know, um, actually, I, I have I been can't buying the last my time games. I bought a GameStop game. I've been yeah, getting all I my stuff been... from Best Buy, honestly. Uh, yeah, I, I don't I buy. It. I haven't in a while. The last game I got there was uh, MLB The Show, but that's it. Like other places, I do buy at Walmart now, and I'll go to Best Buy. I you know what and I. I don't know. I'm kind of hating on them a little bit right now just because of the, the prices. I think they can be a, a little better people because when you look at their revenue, they're raking in the door from you. And they don't have to be that that horrible about it. So but They do it because they can and they right, have because they don't they're have, like a well-known right. franchise mm-hmm. and they take advantage and not for nothing like you know, GameSp- GameStop used to be my one-stop shop. I don't really have a Best Buy that's near me. Um, but uh, GameStop used to be my one-stop shop for games. I get everything there, but it was just like it was just too much. It was too much after a while, and I think I don't think I've purchased a game from GameStop for maybe like eight months now, eight or nine months. Oh, maybe a little longer than that. Be- just because of the fact that it's just I don't know. I feel like it's just unfair business practices you know they're just taking yeah, advantage it's not a good value can. anymore yeah right right so we'll, we'll see what's happening there i'm excited to hear that so you know i'll, I'll schmooze over to uh walmart probably on november 3rd and see what we got going on there see if i can get some bang for some of these games i've been sitting here reluctant to trade them in because of the horrible trading value that you get so moving along from that i've been checking out i've been hearing some really good news which i about this playstation uh, for patch 2.0 that just dropped today, which I downloaded, and they have a lot of nice posts. They, you know, they got some new voice commands that you can throw on uh, your, your PS4. They have some, you know, some nice help menus. You actually don't need uh, um, what you call a PlayStation camera to to do your voice commands. You can do it through your headset. Also, um, they, you know, they add some new theme stuff so you can add themes to your background, but the one that I was pretty excited about, I don't know if you guys heard about this, is called PlayStation Share Play. Now, this Share Play, I think, is a game changer. The reason why I say that when I drop this on you, I couldn't believe they're actually doing this. Share Play basically allows you 
to host um, through like a, 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 a party um, your PlayStation online with your friends. So say I have a game, right? And I want BJ to play. He got a PlayStation 4 and he doesn't have it. I could share my PlayStation with him and he can see my game. And if he has PlayStation Plus, I can have him join my game that he doesn't have right from his PS4. I thought they had planned that from the jump, though. Yeah, they planned it, but they hadn't activated the feature. They haven't. They haven't activated the feature. Yeah. It just dropped today, and which I think is just it, it's it's a fantastic uh, feature to have on your PS4. So, like you know, if somebody wants to watch a game, they don't really need PSN, so they can they can come on, they can watch a game, you know, live. Or if they want, you know, if you want to hand them the controller, almost like a log me in kind of session or join me session or go to assist session, you know, you could say, here, take the controller and they can start playing the game. And uh, if, you, you know, if they have PlayStation Plus and you have like NBA or you got FIFA or you got MLB or a two player game that you want to play, that person can join your game as a guest, not owning the game. I'm guessing through some kind of emulator that they're gonna that they you know they're putting with that patch, and they can play play a game with you. So that I'm dying to try, but I don't have nobody to play with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we still so, in the brokenness. Yeah, so that that was that you know that I thought that was probably one of the coolest things I did you know I've seen in a long time. I didn't I, I've heard about I've That's heard about feature. it in a, in a small in a smaller way. And I, you know, I didn't know if they were actually going to do it or, you know, how they get sometimes, you know. Oh, yeah. They're like, yeah, we're so, going to give it to you three years from next now. Next level. <laughs> what you right. got to buy, I mean, this, you gotta buy this little, little black box right here? <laughs> you know? No, so, I mean, they are handled a little bit better. And I think it's just great because of the fact that, you know, there's people like me. I plan on getting the PS4 at the end of the year. And they're, I don't know what games I really want because they you know, this whole new gen thing, we talked about this before, there, you know, there's some really cool games, but there's nothing that really, like, stuck out to me where I was just like, I need to have a new gen console, or I need to have a, a PS4, or I need to have a, a Xbox, um, a Xbox One. So, share play will definitely give people like me the opportunity to play with Jason or you, BJ, where I'm just like, okay, you know what, I think I'm going to buy this game so I can play it by myself and then, you know, maybe level up my character and then when Jason comes back, then we can do some co-op. Right, right. right. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and, and those are, those are you know, those are all, all fan. I think PlayStation is really hitting it on the head with that. That's a really good feature to have. Um, and, you, you know, like, I know there are reasons for having it, but, like, you know, how great is it, you know, like, basically you can say now, you know what, if my friend doesn't have a game and I want to play with them online, I can, and they don't really need to have that game. Now, you know, the, a lot of things come to mind, I don't know, you know, on your internet connection, I don't know what kind of lag you're going to have, if you're the, uh... You know, yeah, depending you're... on the kind of game it is that you're right. playing, like if you're playing Call of Duty or something like that, another person doesn't have it, and they're emulating it, how good of a quality are they so actually is it getting, be, right. you know... That'll be interesting to see. Definitely interesting to see, but I mean, from from what I've seen, you know, um, you know, you know, people, people, you know, they like it and they, they, they think it's good, but you know, no, I guess you're gonna hear in the coming weeks whether it's actually a really good feature. But just the concept alone, moving forward, I think it's fantastic. Oh yeah. So you know, they have a really good thing there. And just on a side note, Makita, when you get a chance, girl, go look. At the Witcher Three opening trailer that they have, <laughs> blow your effing mind. I'm not doing plan. this, not tonight. I can't. Okay. I can't. Girl, nope. when you see it, you just going. <laughs> nope. You gonna be like, y'all? I'm getting my PS4 waxed up right <laughs> like, now. So, nope. <laughs> why, why do you think I got this? Why do you think I got this? Watch me hot in this right? Because it's blue drop right here. Blue drop. It's because you bribed. It's because you bribed your family to buy it. That's why. <laughs> that, that, that's true too. But I needed to have it here. So when that game comes out. I could spend Mondo Dondo hours playing it. Basically. Oh, yeah. I'm planning already, whenever they announce, because I know they haven't had, like, a set date. Yeah, because I know that CD Projekt Red, that's the that's the uh, developer that mm -hmm. does yeah. uh, The Witcher 3. Um, I know that they said that they pushed back the, the release date because they wanted to make it perfect. And I was like, I was sad, but I said, you know what? I can dig it because... Mm -hmm. 
get it you right. You know, when you want, yeah, when you want to get it right, because we don't want any broken games, because we don't need any more broken games. That's right. Um, have mercy. Not a feel for Right. You want to have something quality where people won't be like, oh, I couldn't do this, I couldn't do that, and then you have to, like, dredge up a whole oh, right sorry. a whole bunch of a whole bunch of patches to fix everything so i'm you know i said as soon as the witcher 3 announces a date i already know i'm taking off days and i'm just gonna cut off my phone i'm being serious i'm taking off days from work i'm gonna cut off my phone i'm gonna stack up my house with like drinks and 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 all types of goodies and stuff That's right. and just keep hope alive zone girl. out and and play it just don't let him play it. That game is gonna be maze balls. I'm tell I can I already know it. I already know it. I get it. It is gonna be maze balls. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if you played actually The Witcher Two, but The Witcher Two was a fantastic game. Yes. Um, and it, I enjoyed it. I I didn't get it on PC. I did buy the port uh, on the Xbox 360, and I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was really good. Um. I mean, just the whole everything. I mean, just the stuff you can do in that game. The story was good. The uh, the action was good. Nothing nothing complicated. Um, I like the way you, you mix potions and you know, you know the effect have on you. You you know how you to how you had to like manage everything properly. And it was, the only thing I didn't like in this the the second one was when you're finished with an area, you're locked out of that area. That was the only thing I didn't like. According I do to like what, the changes. You know, Everything that you do could like inf- affect your environment and how people react to you. I think exactly. that's really cool. That's really. Cool. I mean, they 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 did a really good job. The game was just fantastic. So, uh, you know, I'm excited to see open worldness on uh, Witcher Three. No no closed areas. Everything you can just go what you want to do. What you got to do, go to towns, get drunk. Get hookers, whatever you want to do, it's, just, mm-hmm. it's part of time. So, I, I agree cool. with you. I'm going to be binging. Cool. I'm going to be binging. I am. Yeah. So, so I'm, Makita, is it you or I that shall present the new, the next segment? Sure, I'll go next. Um, okay. I only have one one bit of uh, news, which uh, coincidentally has to deal with Twitch. Okay. Today... They brought down the ban hammer, the new rules of conduct. Wow. Yeah, they added <laughs> a they added a new piece, which is it's been talked about in the uh, the community. No and neck rolls. Basically, huh? No neck rolls. No, no neck chicken. Rolls? No chicken. That's right. No. Is that what no, it is? No, 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 no. Oh, I'm like what? <laughs> no, it's basically. Um, it's basically telling you can't be half naked on Twitch anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Every I think <clears throat> if you if you've been on Twitch or you're in the gaming community, if you're like a serial streamer or you're you just you're constantly looking for uh I guess streamers to watch for certain games, there are certain streamers that in order Not to me. get Mm-mm. right, we'll in that. order to get uh, a good amount of views and followers they will come on arms. pretty much, yeah, pretty much butt naked um, to game. And, you know, at first I was kind of like, okay, you know, I can't knock the hustle because, <laughs> no, I can't, I can't knock it because, you know, if there weren't, if, if there wasn't a market for it, which is thirsty dudes it. and thirsty girls, they wouldn't be doing it. But then, what it does is it makes, I guess, it, it makes Twitch more of a peep show, and it makes it less about gaming, and and yeah. it's it, it sucks because then you have streamers that are shitty gamers. They don't know how to play, but they know they're going to get those views, and they know they're going to get that partnership with Twitch because they have so many followers, and, um, you know, they just come on there in their lingerie or they're like, crop tops and short shorts and bend over and, uh, or guys who I guess these like aspiring models whatever you know with this coiffed hair and abs all out and stuff and I'm just like I mean I'm just like okay that's cool you know you work out but what is what the hell is this like I just want to see the game I'm not I'm not really here for that so you can put that on your so, YouTube channel 
or yeah, you can some put other that on channel. your YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, or, <laughs> yeah, that's what it's for. But that's you know, or Twitch basically channel. said, <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> Twitch Not that I go there. basically said, look, keep all the half nakedness at the beach. That's pretty much what they said, and they're telling viewers find your fat material somewhere else. Yep, and it's. You know, I feel like it's the right thing to do. This is what we're here for. If you are, if you know how to play well and you're entertaining, this new rule should not phase you one bit. bit. Not one bit. And there are other websites for half nakedness, and and you know, it, it's really not that serious. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We so we said, had that first influx of. Uh nakedness when they you know released the ps4 and the xbox anyway when everybody was like oh we can <laughs> oh, use yeah. twitch now <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. you know just PS4, running now, all negative in front of the camera like i'm on camera i'm on camera <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We, first so, yeah. week of play people on ps4 were getting banned left and right mm. yeah and like they've right never now, seen a webcam before before mm-hmm. and you know what's so funny because like now on you know like when you get your Xbox they put all these things that you can apps that you can download right so I fired my PS4 you know how long it took me to find Twitch I didn't even think they had it on there because <laughs> they hide it so deep <laughs> I'm like what the deuce so it's just it's just funny that you know people are out there and it's pretty sad that they're doing that and it's I when you were saying when you were talking to Kita this is what I was thinking about right last week. They had um, some free games to download on the Xbox, right? So mm-hmm. I go um, get this game. It's this little indie game. Uh, it's called Chariot, I think it's called, mm-hmm. right? So, so let me download it, right? And what Xbox does, it, it throws up some of the Twitch windows while you're, you know, to show you video of the game while before you download it, you know, see what it's about. Mm-hmm. There was this dude. I, he must have been like 280, right? Sitting on a couch sideways. Mm-hmm right with his belly hanging out <laughs> eating chips and talking about how pissed off he is because people keep jumping out of his twitch channel i'm like dude nobody wants to look at your freaking gut <laughs> you know and it was just like there it was hairy and then he gets up and, be, and then he i could have swore he farted <laughs> he said, oh. and he goes i'll be right back i gotta go get some soda i'm like yo bro i could i'm like yo this gotta be a joke <laughs> <laughs> right? Why won't anybody watch me? And then he starts complaining about how he lost his job. I'm like, no freaking. Yeah, yeah go figure. <laughs> I'm like, dude, fix yourself. <laughs> For God's sakes, man, have some decency. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe, maybe he felt like, okay, you know, and I'm not proud even... of it. I he think he just like he had no bag, you know. Oh my he God. had it was no f's to give, and he was just like. I guarantee you there were some people on there just like, yo, you got to see this guy, bro. You got to see this guy. He is out of control. And that's what he's been getting. But, you know, it, that's something that is only entertaining for maybe like five or ten minutes. If yeah. that, you know, like I'm, I'm thinking about a window and you're done. You know, yeah. It's, yeah. And it's, it's horrible. And that's all he did all day. He was excited about losing his job. But you know what? His Internet still worked for him to stream online. Yeah, we'll see how long right. that lasts. Like, yeah, I'm like, you about to be cut off. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, Keith, you got I, anything I, I else for us? Was, um, was, nope. that, was that the only, was that was the only that thing? One, one team. Yeah, go for it, girl. No, I said that was it. That's that oh, one that, thing. Oh, that one thing. I thought you said you had another one thing. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. So, moment everyone's really been waiting for. Adventures oh, in Bungeoneering. <laughs> Yes, yeah, as you guys may or may not know, I am an actual engineer. Shut up, Jason. Don't say it. I can see a little smirk <laughs> on your face. I see I it coming. I say anything. I, I see look, it coming. And I'm not going to say nothing. <laughs> if you guys have tuned in to some of the other um, recent Geek Swag podcasts that we have, um, in this segment, I basically talk a little bit about uh, just interesting um engineering news uh just to kind of coincide with uh, uh ladies of the round tables efforts uh to kind of support um science technology uh engineering and math 
education, whether it's, you know, just in regular high school or in college. Um, I think uh, Ladies of the Roundtable, they have a scholarship fund that they do donations, donation drives regularly for. So in that whole spirit, I'm trying to be an advocate for getting people interested in such things. And um, one of the last episodes, um, I kind of spoke about um, Makerspace and, uh, you know, just how people are using 3D printers to make all kinds of, like, really, really, really interesting things and that schools are starting to use them as, like, um, you know, like shop class. So instead right. of instead of them going and using balsa wood, <laughs> you know, and saws and stuff like that, they're actually using uh, 3D printers to make all kinds of stuff in shop class. So, um, you know, just to kind of coincide with that news, I'm not certain if you guys heard, but they have been and are in the process of using 3D printers to actually make not only just prosthetics, but actual organs. And um, they yeah. haven't, yeah, they they haven't really gotten to a point where they're able to, you know, like make a complex organ, you know, like a heart or something like that. But I think they have made, you know, they've made stuff for like, um, uh, like prosthetic ears, legs. Um, I think there's like a really really big contest, I guess you could say, that a company has where. They're going to give a whole bunch of money to the first company that's able to use um, a 3D printer, a bio uh, printer, I guess it's called. I forget what it's called. Um, but they're going to make an actual liver. Uh, I, I don't want to call it synthetic because it's not really synthetic. They actually use living cells, like stem cells. And basically all 3D planter, printers do is they, you know, they just make little lines and they lay down layers of cells on top of each other and then they take those cells and they allow them to grow and you know they have to have them in the right environment and they and their whole plan is eventually they'll be able to do that for almost any organ but um from the sounds of it they're probably a good maybe decade or so away from having anything that's able to hit the market that'll be FDA approved kind of deal but the good news is that they're working on such things, which is kind of cool. Um, I don't know if you guys remember. You remember that scene in um, Face Off when uh, when he was – was it Face Off? Yeah, I think it was Face Off when they were – it was either Face Off or I forget what other movie it was where they were actually making up um, an organ or like an – uh, an arm or something like that for somebody in some sci-fi movie. It was interesting because you would look at it and it kept laying over. Oh, that's what it was. It was on um, um, Fifth Element. Remember that scene in, in Fifth Element when they all they had was the alien's arm inside the inside the you know inside the chamber, and then they used a really big machine, and then they basically laid you know they had a machine that laid out laid down I layers. Seen you haven't seen it. Oh, it's hilarious. It, what it did was it laid down layers of the cells until it fully generated, I guess, the skeleton. And then it, like, pulled over a whole bunch of cells for the rest of the musculature. Mu musculature? I think that's the word. And then, word. yeah, 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 I think I got it. And then, you know, it, it did other things. But that's kind of the concept, you know, using using something that will lay down actual living cells and actually create new create an organ so they're getting there it's pretty cool cool technology they're using it for a whole 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 lot of different things um i'll continue to try to do research and look into stuff to find some cool stuff they're making out of it but um i mean 3d printers y'all if you got kids get them into it early they have like they have like kids in elementary schools using 3d printers now you know, try try whatever you can. They've got like little clubs and little things. Get them into little maker maker space groups or whatever. Get them interested. Get them in it, people. It's good stuff. Gone other days where people used to use their hands with play doh to make things. Three <laughs> D printers. That's right. You know, they're making musical instruments, making guns. Unfortunately, they're making all kinds of stuff with three D printers. All kinds of stuff. So yes. Oh no. I'm kind of uh, torn 
with things like that. Like I could totally see like the creative the creative side of that mm-hmm. with uh, you know uh, not not um, 3D printers in general, but I mean like as far as kids using them, like okay that's cool. But I guess maybe I'm old fashioned where I just like to just make stuff with my hands, you know? Yeah, know. yeah, that's that's true. I'm, I think the from what I see in it though, um, one of the advantages is I mean. One of the things a lot of people try at times to get kids interested in, of course, is in technology. And a lot of the ways that most people will do that is they'll get them into gaming, which is fine and good and stuff because kids will get familiar with computers and laptops and smartphones because they like games. But in doing something like uh, dealing with Makerspace, I mean, it's like, I guess you could say it's a nouveau way of doing legos you know there's they're still building stuff they're actually learning how to code they're learning how to um do computer-aided design they're learning to program they're learning to do a lot of really really extremely useful tasks and skills that are related to science technology and um, engineering and math you know it, it's 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 a good thing because it'll it'll keep them interested in those topics and in those fields and you know it'll bridge that gap instead of just having them look at a book and wondering what this is used for or how it'll be useful it's actual application you know of that you know of those fields which is cool i think it's i think it's a good way to k- get kids interested and get kids into things so that's why i like it i'm excited about it well you know pros and cons pros and cons yes uh, yeah, i agree <laughs> with you i mean anytime you got technology there's always a con always definitely so i i, I definitely agree with you there yes definitely there's always that so Ladies and gentlemen, those were our little segments. We are very close to the end of our show. So what I'd like to do is take a little bit of time to get you guys uh, informed on what we have coming up. Um, So, Makita, let people know what anything interesting or big or new that you're going to have coming up on Zombie Gamer or Z Gamer online. Um... Yeah, actually, yeah, I, I just, you know, it, time goes by so fast. I'm just thinking about, like, how November is practically here. Mm-hmm. Um, is it, it's November the 8th, November the 7th and November the 8th, mm-hmm. um, ZGO will be at, uh, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm tongue-tied, and Gadget Expand. Mm-hmm. It's basically, it's a, I don't know if it's a smaller consumer electronics show but um it's my first time going this year and i'm just really excited because i you know we get to be pressed this year we get to see brand new gadgets we may be able to see like the newest things with 3d printers i'm sure that they'll have 3d printers here and they'll definitely have some uh a lot of games and electronics that uh, i'll i'll probably have a crap load to share with you guys in the nice. next show. So I'm look looking forward to um, to going there and spending time all day. All day long. All day long. Nice. Mm-hmm. That sounds exciting. That's good. That's good. What about you over there, Dirty Helmato? You got anything for the peoples that you working yeah, on, you getting into? I, uh, yeah, I got my, my YouTube channel putting some uh some stuff together. I actually did some work over the weekend, some videos that I've been uh, trying to get out there. So mm-hmm. I'm hoping to have that done in the next week or two, actually. Beautiful. Getting all my, my fun stuff going. So that's what I got going on. Anything in particular? Um, I got some gameplay stuff. I got some uh, unboxing stuff. Um, unboxing. Yay! I like open up boxes. <laughs> <laughs> no more minted box. So, you know, just just uh, a few things like that. Um, I, I'm actually looking to do one um, on uh, upgrading a PS4 hard drive. I'm waiting for my hard drive to come in. And it was supposed ah, to be here like a day or two, but it hasn't gotten there yet. So I'm, I'm going to get that one uh, ready because I, I kind of want to lead the way with that one. 
mm-hmm. you know, how to, how to, how to upgrade your, uh, your PS4, you know, get yourself a nice one terabyte hard drive. Nice. Nice. So, that's what, that's, that's all I got going on right now. Sweet. Sweet. All righty. Um, well, as you guys know, um, I, well, you may not have known. Actually, last weekend, um, Extra Life had a big gaming 24-hour marathon donation drive. Um, yeah, I heard about that. That they were doing. I, I tried to stream as much as I could. I was nowhere near the 24-hour mark. I, I probably barely hit 12, if that. But, um, uh, you know, I, the donation drive definitely isn't over. So there's always, you know chances for you guys to donate i think actually ladies of the round table they're gonna have uh the stream team everybody that's on the stream team um as well as the channel itself will be doing their own marathon i think it's this weekend i want to say yeah i think it's this weekend this saturday um so you know definitely keep your eyes um or keep your time open for that because on each one of the channels, uh, I think most of the stream team should have some games to give away, some, some, uh, all kinds of sweepstakes giveaways, all just all kinds of goody goodies. So uh, get your money ready. You know, you don't have to donate a whole lot, but if you don't know the whole extra life um, donation, everything that's donated goes to uh, the Children's Miracle Network. Um, and those are hospitals that are around the country that, you know, they are for children and, you know, dealing with cancer and a lot of other diseases and uh, just special illnesses. And so it goes into the research as well as the care and everything that those hospitals um, are trying, you know, to give to a lot of the kids out there. So it's a good cause. It's a great cause. Dig deep. Doesn't have to be a lot. Give as much as you can, as much as you want. Um, but definitely try to see if you can give something. Um, I'll have links on my page. I've got links to the rest of the, uh, the, um, stream team as well. So definitely this weekend as well as on other days. If you can afford it, $5, anything, you know, just dump it in there. You may, you may win a shiny new game. Um, I know, uh, uh, Zen Studios was gracious enough and thank you guys so much for this. Um, they donated, um, some games they donated a kick beat if you guys have heard of kick beat oh. um for the xbox one and for the ps4 as well as their other game castle storm yeah boy so um you know and though they gave they gifted those to me so if you donate on my page you'll have a chance to win one of those games as well as uh i think i've got some keys for a new moba called uh games for glory i think it's called um, I think those will be. I think those are expiring soon. So definitely go and donate quickly. You'll be able to get a key. Uh, we'll be giving away those. I think for a few more days because I think they'll expire very, very, very soon. And um, definitely, like I said before, keep your eyes on uh, heatmag.com backslash heat swag with two G's. And um, next show. We are going to have a most excellent guest. Um, if you guys know, uh, the actual theme song that we use for Geek Swag is from a nerdcore artist called uh, Megaran, if you haven't heard of him before. Um, he also has a, uh, uh, I guess you'd say a running mate, his player too, as he usually calls him, called K. Murdoch, his producer. And uh, K. Murdoch is going, going to be gracious enough to be on the show with the rest of the Geek Swag crew next week. So definitely tune in. The Sound Samurai himself will be here uh, along with me, your boy Bunny3000, as well as my boy Dirty and the one and only The Grim Freaker. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the Geek Swag Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in today and Put you out, ladies and gentlemen. P E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E